let's take a look at a, a log from today's flight. Um, the main thing that I'm trying to tune right now is that I switched from BL Heli 13.1 to BL Heli 14. And BL Heli 14 is a little more aggressive with the motors, and you have to reduce your P gains a little bit when you do that, or at least I do. Um, so I'm trying to get my P gains back tweaked in where they uh, need to be. Uh, the other thing I've changed recently is I've gone from uh, gyro LPF equals 256 to gyro LPF equals 188. Uh, Boris has recently recommended that uh, it has something to do with getting the sampling frequency of the gyro down from 8 kilohertz to 1 kilohertz, but I'm not really sure why that's good or whatever, but I just take his word for it. So um, the first thing I'm going to look at, uh, just you know, to make sure that everything is okay, sort of sanity check, is I'm going to zoom all the way out and I'm going to look at my gyro traces. And to me, um, these gyro traces, they look okay. Um, again, I'm looking at the thickness of the lines in the zoomed out compressed view because that gives me a, a general sense of the overall noise level. The thicker the line, the more noise there is and the more filtering you need. I have got uh, gyro LPF equals 188 and I've got gyro cut hertz equals, I think it's either 70 or 60. Uh, I'm not sure which, I don't remember. Um, that's, so that's what we're seeing here, the effect of that. And these lines, they, they're not as thin as you would see on like a really noise-free quad. Uh, I have a theory that 4S quads and quads running 5-inch props make less noise than, by the way, by noise I mean vibration, not, not buzzing noise. They have less noise than quads running 6-inch props and 3S, 3S batteries, and higher KV motors make less noise because the noise made by 4S 5-inch props and high KV motors is higher frequency, and therefore it's, it's inherently more attenuated by the time you get down to the frequencies we're interested in, which are somewhere below, say, um, 50 hertz, maybe 100 or 200 hertz if you're looking at the filters. Anyway, so it's not as noise-free as you might see on some people's quads, but I feel like it's 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 not the worst I've ever seen my quad do, and I feel like it's probably acceptable for for good flight. Um, okay, so then let's go to forty-two seconds. Uh, forty-two seconds in, I'm going to make a pass over this uh, tree that I like to fly over, and and we're going to take a look. I'm going to also zoom back in on the on the uh, gyro traces. Let's look at what happens. So there was some characteristic high P oscillation there. Uh, and for those of you who have been asking, what does excess P gain look like? Well, I mean, it's one thing to see it when it's really over the top high. But um, that's an example of where it's just on the edge. And when we start doing an extreme maneuver, it comes out. So let's watch it again. There it was. And if we look at the gyro traces, we can see that the majority of that activity is on the roll axis, the red line. We can see that because the red line is bouncing up and down. That's our gyro trace for the roll, showing us that vibration. We see a little bit on pitch and not much at all on yaw. So I'm going to take a look next at the roll axis, and I'm going to suspect that my roll P gain needs to come down. Now let's tweak this graph a little differently. I'm going to get RC command sub roll and gyro roll. And then I'm going to add another graph with the gyro PID roll. And you've seen me do this before if you've seen some of my other videos. PID sum and, oh dang it, go back where you were. There we go. And PID sum. Okay, so I've got PID and PID sum. Frankly, I think the I term is probably actually completely unnecessary to this analysis, so let's get that out of there as well. Okay, so I'm going to P, D, and the sum. Uh, one of the things I'm going to look for is oscillation in the gyro. If you've got a scenario where you've got a little bit of oscillation in your P term, but it's not resulting in oscillation in the gyro, or you know, then uh, who really cares? You know, if you have smooth camera, then who really cares if there's a little bit of oscillation under the scene or under the covers? So here's some oscillation. Let's just have a little look here at what that looks like. Uh, it's really too quick to even catch. 
Um, here's some more oscillation, oscillation in the gyro. And if you look, you'll see that, I think you'll see that this oscillation is kind of constantly happening. There's just always this ripple in my trace. And that is pro it's either noise, but noise would probably be more random. Just sort of a constant oscillation like that. There's always going to be some oscillation. Some of this doesn't look too bad. Like it, that doesn't look too bad. But it's constantly there. And the fact that on, at that 42 second mark on the high throttle, I had an oscillation, uh, which was clearly XSP, uh, tells me I really need to take another look at this. So let's take a look now. We can see that it's a little hard to tell whether, there's the PID sum, that's this blue line. It's a little hard to tell whether P or D is dominating. It kind of looks like P is mostly dominating. Uh, the PID sum is closely following the P line. But they're both pretty close, so it's a little hard to tell. We can definitely see the P term wildly oscillating here. Uh, it's definitely XSP, and in fact, it's interesting because during this move, you you often expect to see the P term damp, uh, so you would have a strong oscillation followed by weaker and weaker oscillations. But because we're in a dynamic and unstable state, we're constantly pushing the P term, and it's, it just keeps oscillating at the same strength. I'm definitely going to reduce my P gain on roll uh, and and get that down. Let's keep looking at this and see what else we see, anything, anything interesting we see anywhere else. There's definitely some noise in the PID sum. Let's turn the PID sum off real quick. And definitely some noise in the D term. So I'm also thinking I'm going to lower my D term cut hertz. I believe I'm at 10 right now. And it could probably stand to come down even a little more. Again, the noise is definitely making it into the PID sum. There's another strong move. Yeah, this could be smoothed out, definitely. And I bet if we watch this playback, we'll see some more. Oh, look, it's the same tree. We'll see some more oscillations. There it was. So you blink, you might miss it, but it's definitely there. The rest of the time, this doesn't look too bad. In fact, this might be a scenario I might even think about. What's my throttle at? My throttle's at 1700 during this move. I might even think about doing this with TPA because I'm not sure during when the throttle. See, yeah, see, here's a case where the throttle is very high and there isn't really a lot of vibration. So, no, I mean a lot of oscillation. You see, the P term here is is going up and down. Let me get rid of the D term now as well. You see the P term here is going up and down, but that's just kind of what the P term does. I mean, it oscillates. As long as it's not oscillating too much, you're okay. Uh, that that looks pretty normal to me. It's really only during these extreme maneuvers that it starts to look weird. And it doesn't seem to be correlated with the throttle position. See right here, I have a very high throttle, but I have completely normal. And again, if we if we play that back, there's no visible vibration or anything like that. So I don't think we need TPA here because the oscillations are not associated with the throttle position. It's not a high throttle. It's when I'm doing like an extreme turn that then we start to see that. Here's another, here's another case. Let's have a look at what that looks like. There it was. You can hear it. I don't know if, you, if the camera is picking up the noise, but let me turn my uh, speakers way up. Anyway, maybe you heard it, maybe you didn't. There's that sort of shutter again. Let's have a look at the pitch axis. We'll just look at P for now. Oh, let's look at D as well. P I D. Forget the P D P I D sum for now. Um, yeah, so again, here's some definite oscillations right here. Bam 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 bam. Um, it seems like that could come down a little bit. It's just this extended hard oscillation. It seems like that could come down a little bit. Rest of the time doesn't look too bad, and and there's still a little more noise in this D term than there should be. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump my uh, P gain on pitch and roll down a little bit, 
and I'm going to decrease my d term cut hertz as well. Um, I don't feel like my d magnitude is actually a problem. In fact, right here on uh, pitch, if we look at the magnitude of the d term, you see that the d term is could actually come up a little bit. It's not really even close to the same magnitude as the p term. So, and most of the, a lot of the time here, yeah, it's just floating around near the axis. So actually, this looks to me like uh, pitch D could come up a little bit. All right, uh, that's what we're going to do for now. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.